catch the spirit over the land. Open up your heart and give someone your hand. Methodist Church. Today, Jay Latham's part-time job will take him into the eye of a hurricane. A part-time job, a full-time experience, and just one of many exciting careers in the Air Force Reserve. Air Force Reserve, above and beyond. Call 1-800-257-1212. CBN International. Their home was a bitter battlefield where alcohol, drugs, and fear were weapons that were destroying their marriage. Bob and Annie Arthur share their struggle and how they found a perfect love to mend their broken lives. Next. Hello, welcome to the 700 Club. Thanks for joining us. I'm Lee Webb. Coming up, author Frida Bowers tells how the next 40 days could change your life. Don't miss her insights from Give Me 40 Days later in the program. Pat Robertson and Lisa Ryan will also join us later, but first, here is Terry Mewson. You know, as far back as Annie Arthur can remember, she was always afraid. And in a desperate effort to feel a sense of calm, she turned to drugs and alcohol. When she did, life spun hopelessly out of control, driving her marriage toward divorce and her thoughts to suicide. Reporter Debbie Harper follows Annie's struggle to find peace. It was a day-to-day -day life. It, w it wasn't a marriage. It was watching after her. Every time I left to go to work, I didn't know if she'd be there when I got back, if my daughter would be there. Um, the house was ransacked a few times by her when she had left. And so it was a day-to-day -day thing. You didn't know what was going to happen. Marriage was supposed to be forever. But for Bob and Annie Arthur, just getting through the day was a challenge. All the love they had hoped to find in each other was gone. Their marriage was dead. I just couldn't live like him, and it was a warfare. It was a definite heaven and hell were raging for control in my house. That's what it was. But their difficult marriage merely reflected the turmoil in their own personal lives. From the time she was a young child, Annie was filled with fear. I don't ever remember a day waking up without being afraid in my heart. As she grew into an adult, her fears grew with her. Annie became a prisoner of her own thoughts. If I could just keep myself in a house with the shades down and the doors locked and no, nobody to come near me, that's how I was. I would sit at the table for hours smoking and drinking coffee and just wondering why I was ever born. I knew, I thought fear was placed into me at birth. Annie tried desperately to escape her fears. Pain pills seemed to offer the only relief. But she had soon traded her fears for an addiction. Over a period of a couple of years, it started out at three pills a day, then the six, then the nine, and then, uh, and then I would take ten pills first thing in the morning and ten more about four o'clock. So by the end of the addiction, I was 20 to 30 pills a day, and then I would couple it with alcohol. Um, anything to keep shoving that, whatever that was, rising in me down. Annie became so despondent, she tried to end her own life. That was the thought that was going through me. Just end your life. Just end your life. You'll never amount to anything anyway. You're so afraid of everything. One suicide attempt nearly succeeded. After I was put in the hospital because they couldn't get a blood sugar on me or anything, I was, uh, it was pretty bad. And um, I went into grand mal seizures three days later. And then that's when they realized there's a strong addiction here. And, and because I was in the hospital and didn't have any medication, then my brain uh, sent me into a bunch of convulsions. Annie's life was a picture of despair. But Bob's life was also empty. 
just like Annie's. It was even times that being in the bar, I just wanted just to get old one day. What's going what's to take next time to fill this void? Because nothing ever kept it filled, just momentarily. After our daughter was born, um, I, he, he had an outburst of anger and he destroyed my house, literally. But Bob wanted help. Help for his empty life. Help for his anger. Help for his failing marriage. He found that help in church when he opened his heart to the gospel message. I knew that Jesus Christ was the only way, beyond any shadow of doubt. And immediately quit smoking, drinking, everything that I did. I quit the swearing, quit hanging around with the friends, everything that I did. And God just completely turned my whole life around. Bob found what he was looking for. The void in his life was filled. But Bob's transformed life was too much for Annie to deal with. Now I was living with this holy man, and, and it was very difficult because he was so righteous and I wasn't. And, I mean, I, I, we were so different. Annie resented Bob's relationship with the Lord. Their home became a spiritual war zone. When I knew he had evangelism class on Tuesday nights, I would start drinking. The moment he got home from work, I'd start drinking my little beers while I was cooking dinner, and just so he'd be sure to know that I'd be drunk by the time he got home. Over those four-year period, God just like he put his love and grace in my heart so much for her that I couldn't get mad at her. Um, and she would continually do stuff, and she'd get mad because I wouldn't get mad at her. Just like I, I, I could not get mad at her, no matter what she did. I would smoke one after the other and blow it in his direction and just constantly do things to harass him, waiting, just hoping he would just give up on me. I could feel something was going on in the house. There was a war raging in our house without words, without words from him. But, but I was um, a raving maniac most of the time because he wouldn't, he would not fight with me no matter what I did. He would not argue with me and fight with me. He would just gracefully leave the room or, or leave the situation. I just felt for her, and I realized that, again, it was the, the spiritual warfare, so I would pray for her at night, anoint her at night, uh, and just, you know, say things that were not as well they were. I'd claim scripture over her and stand on them. It seemed that the more I did, the more, the kinder he was to me, and I, I don't know why, I just wanted him to fight with me. Bob continued to pray for Annie, and he persevered in his faith. And then it happened. I flew into the house and I, the minute I saw Bob, I said, I can't stand living with you anymore. I just can't live with you anymore. And I ran to my bedroom and threw myself on my bed. And he came over by the bed and knelt down very cautiously and said, you know, Annie, we can pray about this. And I just fell on the floor and just started crying. I said, God, I, I have nothing to offer you and I'm, I'm just so afraid. And he said, if you'll give me your heart, I'll make it new. And um, he said, my peace will become your peace. And so I, I just, I asked him to come into my life that moment. She didn't say a word. She walked out of the bathroom. I could see it in her eyes. She was alive. She had been dead for so many years, so empty, so void of everything. God marvelously filled Annie's empty heart and began to change her life. The more um, I found love with God through the word, the more that perfect love because the Bible says perfect love casts out fear, but the more I found love with God, the more I found that I wasn't afraid. Through prayer, God did the impossible for Bob and Annie Arthur. He not only transformed Annie's life and restored their marriage, but he blessed them with a family too. God has so restored to me all the years that the enemy um, destroyed my life. For this couple, there's no doubt that God answers prayer. I just feel alive for the first time in my life. I feel um, happy to wake up in the morning. Whereas there was a time where I couldn't stand to wake up in the morning. I couldn't wait. I, I would beg God to take me in my sleep each night. And I, I would, you know, hope not to see the morning sun. And, and today, it's, it, every morning is a new day. Does that any story sound like some of you? A man named St. Augustine said, Our hearts are restless to lay rest in thee. Every single human being is restless. I remember years ago feeling like I didn't belong anywhere. I remember I tried every kind of pleasure, tried things going along the way, and there was this big void uh, in my life. I didn't have the problem she had, but I certainly had enough because that's the story of everybody. It isn't just peculiar to somebody that has irrational fears. This is the story of everybody. There's a longing in our heart, and we try to fill it with uh, relationships, as they're called today. We try to fill it with alcohol. Uh, well, now it's drugs. 
uh, with uh, incessant music and noise, uh, with activity, with business, with chasing money, with uh, all of career, all these things, and none of them satisfy. And that's what's so bad is that we keep looking and looking and looking, and, and when we get to what these see seeming goals are, we, they don't satisfy, and many times we're too old to turn around. It's one of the great tragedies of life. But listen, right now, Annie has the answer, and Jesus has the answer for you if you'll accept what she did and what her husband did. They came to Jesus. He will fill the void in your life. That emptiness, that cry, that longing, that sense of depression, all those things that are there, Jesus will come into your heart and he'll fill it. He will come in and give you a new life. That's why it's called being born again. It's like you're a new creation in Christ. Old things have passed away. Behold, all has become new. That's what her testimony was. That's what yours can be. I go from the old to the new. Would you like that? 